So I have here with me two of the newest mid-range devices from Samsung, which is the Samsung Galaxy A55 5G and the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, it's your Tech Girl Mary and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Finally, ito na yung requested video niyo so far aside from the Vivo V30 series. But sorry to those who are expecting for a full review. I am so sorry to disappoint. Ito ay first impressions lamang and of course a quick comparison between these two. I recently just got these units so I don't think it will be fair to call it a full review. So why is the Samsung Galaxy A series so popular especially in the US? If you've been seeing articles about Samsung's A series lalong lalo na yung last year, it really made its mark to the point na naging top 1 bestseller siya all over the world. Again, this stats is from last year. But keep in mind, especially countries like the United States, hindi kasi masyadong uso sa kanila yung budget to mid-range devices ng brands like Infinix, Tecno, even Oppo, Vivo. Somehow, ang malakas lang talaga sa smartphone scene ng US is of course, their flagship ones. And kung may mid-range to budget phones man, Ang usually tinatangkilik lang sa kanila ay Samsung, Google, nothing, and even OnePlus. Anyway, sorry for that very long intro. Let's begin with the prices. The Samsung Galaxy A35 5G has a retail price of 20,999 pesos. This is for the 8GB plus 256GB storage, while the Samsung Galaxy A55 5G is priced at 24,990 pesos with the same configuration. From what I know, from March 18 to April 18, pwede kayo makapag-pre-order para may libreng travel adapter worth 1,190 pesos and Samsung Buds FE worth 5,490 pesos. So yes, expect that the box of these phones will be this thin and there will be no adapter inside. So kung makakapag-pre-order kayo at makakapag-decide kayo from those dates that I mentioned, mas okay, at least hindi nyo na kailangan mag-purchase ng original Samsung adapter. But for those who already has it, I don't think you need to hurry. Both the Samsung Galaxy A35 and A55 5G both have the ice blue, lemon, lilac, and navy blue colorways. This is how the navy blue looks like and the lilac colorway. Alright, to be honest, Samsung wasn't very specific with its design details, but based on my research, for its display, they both got a Corning Gorilla Glass Effectus Plus and IP67 water resistance. They also both have glass backs, pero hindi sinabi guys ni Samsung kung anong klaseng glass yung nasa likod. While the A55 5G naman has a metal frame, while the A35 has a plastic frame. Which is why, medyo may kahabigatan din itong A55 5G. To be specific, it's 230 na grams, while this device is at 209 grams. And same with the Samsung Galaxy A25 that we reviewed a month ago, they both got a wedge layout on its sides for a more comfortable grip. Which from what I remember is not present sa kanilang mga A-series last year. To those with small hands, I'm not sure if this will be an issue to you or not because they are not just heavier, they are also bigger. The Galaxy A55 now has a 6.6 inch display size with a Super AMOLED Full HD Plus display. And if you remember the Samsung Galaxy A54 from last year, na hindi ko hawak guys, pero yon ay may 6.4 inch display lang. So yup, the display is 0.2 inch bigger now. And the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G has the same display specs of 6.6 inches, Super AMOLED Full HD Plus display. So anong pinagkaiba nilang dalawa? To be honest, wala. Same sila ng display specs and even the size of their bezels parehas lang din. At this point, medyo bothered ako sa kapal ng bezels na meron pa rin hanggang ngayon yung kanilang recent A-series. Even their battery size and charging support are the same. But their difference is that the Galaxy A55 5G uses the Exynos 1480 SoC, while the A35 5G uses an Exynos 1380, which is the same chipset that you can find on the Galaxy A54. 
Now for the cameras, the A55 5G has a 50 megapixels main camera, a 12 megapixels ultra wide, and a 5 megapixels macro lens. While the A35 5G actually has the same camera specs except the ultra wide, which has a lower 8 megapixels resolution. And then lastly, for the front camera, A55 has a 32 megapixels, while the A35 has a 13 megapixels. As of now, here are a few sample photos I took using the A55 5G specifically while I was in Nueva Ecija. Sorry guys if yung sample shots natin is more focused on the A55 than the A35. This is because hindi ko dala tong smartphone na to nung umalis ako to go to Nueva Ecija. But if I have time, I will be doing a separate video on this one. By the way, Samsung also focused on its security by them installing a standalone Nox. Alam daman nating lahat na halos sa Galaxy S series lang available itong Nox Volt nila. So from what I know, first time yatang ginawa ni Samsung na naglagay sila ng ganitong security feature sa kanilang affordable lineup. Surprisingly, both of these phones have a hybrid SIM tray, meaning you can still expand your storage and use a physical SIM card. I also said surprisingly dahil kadalasan yung mga mid-range to higher mid-range devices, hindi po sila expandable storage which is still a big deal to some. And good news to those who doesn't like upgrading their smartphone every year or every two years, Samsung promised four years of major operating system update and up to five years of security patches. Two years shorter lang naman doon sa mga bagong flagship devices nila, pero hindi pa rin masama guys. This is still longer than what other brands can give us. Anyway, this has been my weekend away with the Samsung Galaxy A55 and A35 5G. Literal na 48 hours lang. So if you have more questions, especially with the Samsung Galaxy A55 5G, let me know because I will be doing a dedicated camera review on this one. And of course, other aspects that you still want me to cover. Again, it's your tech girl Mary and see you on our next video. Bye!